Hello and welcome to this lecture on fundamentals of electric drives. In the last lecture, we were uh, discussing about the slip power recovery scheme and in fact, we, are uh, we were discussing about one type of drive which is called a static Cramer drive. The static Cramer drive uh, looks like this. So, we have a rectifier uh, in the rotor circuit, then we are recovering this uh, power P R and feeding this uh, power back to the supply. Now, in this case, what we have here is that uh, as we observe uh, in this case, the slip can be uh, controlled by controlling the triggering angle alpha of the converter. So, we will also try to derive some of the relationship. Now, neglecting losses, in fact, what we can say here is that a rotor loss, uh, neglecting losses in this case, losses in the circuit, this, uh, this resistance, uh, this uh, inductance we have assumed uh, to be an ideal inductor. So, the resistance we can assume to be equal to 0. So, neglecting losses, we can say that the slip power which is recovered, which is the power that is a, this is the slip power S into P G the slip power which is being recovered from this is equal to V d 1 into I d same as V d 2 into I d. So, the power which is being recovered is S into P g is, is equal to P r. So, P r is S into P g that is equal to V d 1 into I d and it is same as V d 2 into I d the same power is being recovered here. So, what is uh, the, the mechanical output? The mechanical output is 1 minus s into the air gap power and that is equal to the mechanical output. In fact, the output which is, which is uh, coming out of this as P m is having a torque T and omega m is the speed. So, the torque of the motor is T and the speed is omega m. So, we can say in this case that that is equal to torque into omega m and that is equal to torque into omega m s is the synchronous speed into 1 minus s. Or from this equation, we can say that the torque is equal to P g divided by omega m s. So, uh, what is uh, P g? P g can be obtained from let us say this is our equation 1 and this is our equation equation 2 let us say and what we obtain here is equation 3. So, P g can be obtained from equation 1 can be substituted in equation 2. So, uh, this will give us torque is equal to P g is, is equal to uh, v d 1 into i d divided by s by omega m s. So, this is what we have here and what is uh, v d 1? v d 1 we have already calculated, we have already found out the value of v d 1 which is from this equation 3 root 6 v s by pi n that will substitute here. So, this is 3 root 6 v into s by pi n i d by omega m s by s here. So, uh, in this case s and s will cancel. So, that is equal to 3 into root 6 v i d by pi n. Now, if we see this equation, the equation for the torque, the torque is given as a function and it is proportional to I d. So, we see that the torque is proportional to I d. V is constant, 3 into root 6 is also a constant, pi and n are the constant uh, quantity. So, T is proportional to I d. So, what we get here, T is proportional to I d. So, if we want to control the torque of the induction motor 
and hence if you want to control the speed of the induction uh, motor, we have to control the DC link current, ID is the DC link current. So, the, the DC link current is ID. So, if we can control this current ID, we can control the torque of the motor or the speed of the motor. So, that is what is coming from this equation. Now, let us draw the AC equivalent circuit of a static Kramer drive. Now, we draw the AC equivalent circuit from the rotor side. So, the AC equivalent circuit will look like this. So, we start from the rotor side here. So, this is uh, V r the, the rotor applied voltage in this case. We have the rotor resistance and we have the rotor uh, leakage reactance which is X r. The frequency here is the slip frequency S f. So, we have to multiply with S. Now, we are referring everything from the rotor side. So, the stator reactance is referred as excess prime from the rotor side, the slip resistance, uh, the, the slip frequency. So, we multiply here with S. Then we have the stator resistance referred from the rotor side RR prime. So, this is what we get here. So, this is the applied voltage. So, the, the voltage here is S V referred from the rotor side. So, S V prime and this is the rotor resistance R R. So, this is the AC equivalent circuit of the motor, AC equivalent circuit from the rotor side. So, what is the R S prime? R S prime is R S divided by n square, n is the stator to uh, rotor tons ratio. What is excess prime? Excess prime is excess by n square. So, n is the stator to rotor tons ratio, stator to rotor tons ratio. So, we are referring everything from the rotor side and this uh, equivalent circuit will help us to find out the current uh, the equivalent current in the circuit. Now, let us draw the phasor diagram. So, the phasor diagram of the drive is as follows. We start with the phase voltage that is V and the phase voltage supplies a magnetization current which is I m which is almost pi by 2 lagging behind this or say for example, if uh, there is some, some loss component that will have some loss component here. So, so this is I m and uh, over this we, we have the rotor current which is I r referred from the stator side and then when we join these two, we get the overall current. Now, this diagram we are drawing, this is our stator uh, current which is I s and the, the rotor current here is I r and then we, we have also a magnetizing current. We also have a transformer current which is being taken from this side. So, the transformer current which is taken by the transformer is the current which is I t, I t. So, transformer current is basically drawn by the converter. So, the converter is drawing the transformer current here. So, the converter is uh, drawing the current and we have a delay angle which is alpha, alpha is larger than 90 degree. So, in this case, if we see here, we draw the, the transformer current and this is the angle alpha. So, so alpha here is 90 degree 
and alpha maximum we said it is something like 165 uh, degree, alpha maximum is equal to 165 degree. So, if we assume that the transformer current is constant, the locus of the transformer current is a circle, locus of the transformer current is a circle. So, this varies in a circular fashion. But the range of the alpha is from 90 to 165. So, the transformer uh, current will have this phase, this value when alpha is 90. So, if alpha is 90, what is the slip? Now, if we see this equation, if alpha is 90, what is the slip? If alpha is 90 degree, what is the slip here? Slip is minus n by m into cos 90 degree that is equal to 0. It means when we exactly put alpha equal to 90, the converter is not recovering any power. So, the slip equal to 0, it means the rotor is rotating at synchronous speed. When alpha is alpha maximum, alpha is 165 which is alpha maximum, what is the slip here? Slip is minus n by m into cos of 165 which is a negative value which is greater than 0 which is equal to s maximum. So, when alpha equal to 0 the slip equal to 0 here, when alpha is 165 the slip is s maximum. So, s maximum means this is the lowest possible speed, lowest possible speed. When the slip is higher, the speed is lower because we have the equation the speed is equal to omega m s into 1 minus s. When s equal to 0, the speed is the synchronous speed. When s is s maximum, the speed is minimum. So, in this case, we get the minimum speed. So, what about the combined current? So, this is I t, the transformer current which is drawn by the transformer and this is the transformer uh, current corresponding to 165. So, if we draw the final phasor of the current that will look like this, this is the total current. I total. So, what is this I total? I total is a current which is flowing or being obtained from the grid. So, we have a grid here, the current which is obtained from the grid is I s plus I t. So, I total is equal to I s, the current drawn by the stator of the induction motor plus the transformer I t. So, this I total is having this value. And what about the power factor here? The power factor angle in this case is theta. The angle that this makes with the voltage V is called the power factor angle. So, uh, when we operate at lowest possible speed, what is the power factor angle? So, we can draw it corresponding to this. So, this is for maximum possible uh, slip or the minimum possible speed. So, we get the value of the total current which is this. So, this is I total for, for uh, maximum slip. And what about the corresponding angle here? Angle is theta. So, what we find here is that when we change the speed, the power factor also changes. And in fact, when the slip increases, the power factors become poorer and poorer. So, we conclude here that at a lower speed, the motor operates at a reduced power factor. So, at, at lower speed, the overall power factor of 
the drive is less. So, at lower speed the overall uh, power factor of, of the drive is less. So, it means when we decrease the speed, the speed decreases the power factor, power factor also decreases. So, this is a very important conclusion as the speed uh, decreases the power factor also decreases. So, we have to remember this that uh, at reduced speed the motor uh, runs at a reduced power factor, the overall drive static Kramer drive runs at a reduced power factor. Let us now draw a closed loop speed control scheme for the static Kramer drive. Closed loop speed control scheme for static Kramer drive. Now, here the speed is less than the synchronous speed. So, we, we have the, the AC line here, it is a three phase line and our motor is a three phase motor. This is the slippering motor. So, it is a three phase stator and three phase rotor and in the rotor side we have, we have a converter, a rectifier here uncontrolled rectifier in the rotor side and then we have a converter to recover the power. This is a control fully controlled converter bridge. So, we have the diesel link here, this is I D, the diesel link current and this is the inductor that is L D and we have a transformer which is connected to the three phase converter and is, is feeding the power to the grid, thus it is recovering the slip power. So, uh, this is the AC supply. three phase and this is the slip ring induction motor, slip ring induction motor. So, we sense the rotor speed by means of a speed sensor. So, so here we have a speed sensor and the speed sensor gives us the feedback value of the speed. This is omega m and we have here the reference speed which is omega m star. Then we feed this to a PI controller. PI 1. So, this is the speed error and then this is followed by current limiter here we have a speed controller and this gives us the reference value of the current I D star and uh, this is the feedback value of the current. We have a current sensor here by means of which we can sense the actual DC current and this is fed to a PI controller.
and then uh, we have the firing circuit. So, uh, which which gives an angle alpha, the triggering angle to the converter here, and uh, this is this is the closed loop scheme of the drive system. So, in the closed loop, what we are trying to do, we are trying to control the speed of the slip ring induction uh, motor below the Sinkana speed. So, we have a reference speed here. The reference speed is omega m star, and this is uh, compared with the actual speed from a speed sensor and the speed error is fed to a PI controller that is a speed controller and then uh, we have a current limiter uh, which gives us the reference value of the dieseling current. The dieseling current reference value is compared with the actual dieseling current and then uh, the error is generated, error is a current error that is fed to a PI controller and this is the current controller. This is the current controller and this is feeding the firing circuit of the converter and, uh, and the converter operates within this range alpha greater than 90 less or equal to 165 that is uh, that's the alpha maximum and this operates in the inverting mode. So, the power the slip power is recovered from the rotor side and if we assume that the DC link is lossless, the same slip power is fed to the grid side. So, uh, this is the static Kramer drive in closed loop. So, by controlling uh, angle alpha of the converter, we can control the speed. Since this is in the closed loop, we have to just change the reference speed. By changing the reference speed, the speed can be controlled. So, uh, now, uh, this is about the slip ring induction motor control. Now, we will now see the motor control that is the synchronous motor control. How do we control a synchronous motor? So, we will be uh, next discussing on synchronous motor. Synchronous uh, motor are of uh, two types. They are divided into two distinct type. One is called a wound rotor or wound field synchronous motor. And uh, the second type of synchronous motor are called permanent magnet. Synchronous motor. Synchronous uh, motors are uh, primarily not uh, very commonly found, especially the wound field synchronous motors are used for very high power application. High power means in the megawatt range. So, the wound field synchronous uh, motors are applied for very high power application, high power application. So, high power applications means specially in a megawatt range. Whereas, the permanent magnet synchronous uh, motors are used for low and medium power application, medium power application. which means in the few kilowatt ranges. Now, in case of wound field synchronous uh, motor, uh, we have two types of rotor. One is called a uh, cylindrical rotor type, other is called a salient pole rotor type synchronous motor. So, uh, let us see a cylindrical rotor type 
wound field synchronous motor cylindrical rotor. So, in this case the rotor is like a cylinder. So, we have the conductors placed here in the rotor and one set of conductors are carrying dot current, other type of conductors are carrying cross current. So, the net field is in this direction. So, this is a cylindrical rotor and the second type of uh, rotor is called a saline pole, saline pole rotor. So, we have the rotor which is a saline pole structure, the poles are protruding out and the windings are placed like this. This is carrying a DC current, so we, we have I f here and the flux is produced as before here, the flux is somewhere like this and the flux is produced like this. So, in a saline pole rotor, the rotor uh, air gap is non-uniform. So, in this case the air gap is non-uniform. On the other hand, in, in cylindrical uh, rotor air gap is uniform. So, we can say that air gap is uniform here, air gap is uniform, uniform and in this case air gap is non-uniform, air gap is non-uniform. So, if we see a permanent magnet synchronous motor which is also called PMSM motor, permanent magnet synchronous motor, this can be divided into uh, two types, one is called a surface mount permanent magnet motor, surface mount permanent magnet synchronous motor PMSM. And this uh, consists of again uh, two types, one is called a projecting type, projecting type and the second one is called inset type, inset type. In permanent magnet synchronous uh, motor, the rotor is a permanent magnet, the field windings are absent, so we produce the rotor flux by having permanent magnet. In projecting pole type uh, permanent magnet rotor, we have the projecting uh, magnets in the rotor. So, in the rotor we have the projecting magnets. So, this is uh, the rotor structure and we have the magnets here. So, this is the magnet. Similarly, we have magnet here and we have the magnet in the rotor and this is rotor in the magnet and in inset a type of rotor we have the rotor, the magnet is inside the rotor aligned with the surface. So, we have the magnet which is of this sort. So, we have north pole, south pole, north pole, south pole. Similarly, we have north pole here, south pole here, north pole here and south pole here. So, uh, broadly we have seen that we have uh, two types of uh, synchronous uh, motors, wound field synchronous motors and we have permanent magnet synchronous motors. Wound field synchronous motors are applied for higher power application in the megawatt range and permanent magnet synchronous uh, motors are used for low and medium power application. So, uh, we will be discussing the control of synchronous uh, motor in the next lecture. So, we conclude for this lecture today and we will continue with synchronous motors in the next lecture.